So a couple weeks ago, I posted a vlog and I'm really stoked with how it came out. It's one of my favorite videos I've made recently. You should go check it out if you haven't seen it already. But more than anything else, you guys left a ton of comments about the color grade. It's like a very moody, cooled off style. And you guys were really curious about how I color graded that video. I have like a full color grade tutorial from a couple months ago that goes over pretty much my entire process for color grading my clips. But in this video, I wanted to focus in on one small effect that I've been using a lot more since then and that I used a lot and that's basically the key to the look and style of that vlog I posted a couple weeks ago. And that effect is called HSL Secondary. The tool is a part of Lumetri Color in Adobe Premiere Pro, but if you're a DaVinci user or a Final Cut Pro user, there are similar tools in those programs as well. And basically all HSL Secondary does is allows you to select a specific color and make adjustments to it. There's a good chance that you know about it and have even used it in your grades before. But in this video, I wanted to show you a couple, you know, kind of interesting creative ways to use it to really enhance your grading. You also might notice that this video looks a little maybe softer, a little crispier than usual. And that's because I've been using this new light. This is the 120D from Aperture. This isn't like a sponsored paid ad or anything. They were just kind enough to send this over so that I could, you know, kind of step up my lighting game for these videos. That's kind of moody. This is way better than what I was using before. I can't recommend it enough if you're in the market for a good, soft, bright studio light. So I'll put a link to this one in the description. The way I use HSL secondary most frequently is to color correct my skin tones. And you can do this by using the temperature and tint sliders, but I found that that tends to have too much of an effect on the rest of the clip and not just the skin tones. And you can also do this using the hue versus hue curve. But once again, I found that to just not quite do it very well. It tends to kind of wash out the skin, make it look flat, and it just doesn't quite look right. And that's where HSL secondary comes in. So to start using HSL secondary in your color grading, the first thing we need to know how to do is just qualify a color, right? So select and isolate a specific color in the clip. I'm gonna start out by just using this eyedropper tool and clicking on the color that I want to isolate. And you usually won't get a very usable or refined selection just by using that one eyedropper. So we need to do a couple more things to really refine and smooth out the selection. You can use these other two eyedropper tools with the plus and minus on them to add or subtract pixels from the key. So you can click on a different area to add it and then click on an area that you don't want to be a part of the selection and get rid of it. And then if that's also not precise enough, then you can use the sliders to narrow that key down by hue, saturation, and lightness and just dial it in to exactly what we want to isolate. Then once we've refined that selection and isolated exactly what we want to affect, we're gonna use the denoise and blur sliders to just kind of smooth out the selection so you don't have harsh, weird looking edges and artifacts all over the effect. If you use this enough, you'll notice that sometimes you have multiple parts of the clip that are the same color. So you end up with a selection that's just not able to really isolate that one part of the frame, you might end up selecting different things in the background. For example, when I'm shooting in the forest, my skin tone tends to really match the dirt and trees behind me. It's just a very similar shade of red in the final clip. So it's just not quite possible to select my skin tone without selecting those areas in the background. If it's really important that you select just that very specific area, you can try using HSL secondary on a separate Lumetri color effect and then masking that effect to only the area you want to isolate. So then you'll be keying out that specific color and then masking away all the other parts of the frame that you don't want to select. So for example, I could add a new Lumetri color effect to the clip, go down to HSL secondary, qualify my skin tone, and then use a mask on that effect to mask out just my face so we don't see all those trees in the background, but honestly, most of the time, I don't really notice any problems from having a bit of extra selection in other parts of the frame. I've found that if the skin tone isn't quite accurate, 
then the color of those other areas that match the skin tone probably isn't quite accurate either. Really depends on the shot, but that option is there if you need to use it. But that being said, let's go ahead and correct this skin tone. To do this, we're gonna use the three-way color wheel option in the HSL secondary panel, and we're also gonna need to enable our scopes, particularly the vector scopes. You can see exactly what color your skin tones are. Skin reflects light, so you want the highlight parts of the skin to reflect the ambient light around them. So for example, if you're shooting with a green key light, then you would want the highlights to not necessarily be perfectly accurate skin tone, but to be more on the green side because they're gonna be reflecting that ambient light. So it really depends on the specific lighting scenario of your scene, but for my particular clip, I'm shooting outdoors in daylight. So I'm gonna add a bit of blue into the highlights using that color wheel. Next, let's once again use the color wheels to add a bit of red into the shadow areas of the skin. And this helps your skin tone to look more accurate and lively by basically reflecting blood flow under your skin. And that sounds a little weird and creepy, but hopefully you get what I mean. And finally, let's adjust the mid-tones. And this is the wheel that we're gonna use in order to make the skin tone accurate. So you're gonna look at that vector scope in the scopes and see how your skin tone compares to the flesh line, which is that little line in the top left portion of the vector scope that shows you the area where an accurate skin tone falls. So if you see that your skin tone is falling a little to the left of that line, then use the mid-tones wheel and add a bit of purple in until it sits more or less on that line or to the right side of it. And that is going to be an accurate skin tone. In the same way, if your skin tone is too purple and it's falling a little bit to the right of that flesh line, use that mid-tone wheel and push it a little bit back towards the greens. By using the color wheels, you're usually pumping some extra color into your skin tones, regardless of what that color may be. So in most cases, I'll then scroll down and desaturate the skin and then add some contrast to compensate for the lack of saturation so it doesn't just look, you know, completely dead. Then you can just uncheck the box that says color slash gray and you'll be able to see the rest of the shot once again. And you should hopefully be able to see that you now have a much better, more accurate skin tone. Using HSL secondary to adjust your skin tones is way better than using sliders or curves because it allows you to independently adjust the highlights, midtones, and shadows to accurately reflect the way skin actually interacts with the light and environment around it. But that is not the only way to use HSL secondary. We're pretty much just getting started here. You can also use it to isolate and adjust a specific color just for like creative or grading purposes. So for example, you could isolate the sky if it's blue and desaturate it and darken it a bit so it looks stormier and moodier. That's kind of like the obvious way to use HSL secondary, but there's one more technique I've been using with it to add a lot of extra character to my grades, and that's to cool off everything except the skin tones. I'm gonna start off by qualifying the skin tone just like we did earlier in this video, except this time I'm gonna press this little button to invert the selection. So now you'll see we've selected everything except the skin tone. It probably looks a little creepy depending on your clip. I'm also gonna denoise and blur the selection like all the way out for this one. Just since this is like a more noticeable creative effect, I don't wanna have any weird artifacts calling attention to the effect and just making it look bad. And then super simple, I'm just gonna scroll down right past the color wheels, drag the temperature slider towards blue and desaturate those parts of the frame to cool off and desaturate everything except just my skin tone. By doing this, I'm creating a lot of extra color contrast, which draws the eye much more effectively to my skin tone and also just contributes a lot to having an overall cooler, moodier vibe without making the skin tones inaccurate. I'm sure you guys are aware at this point that I like to go a lot more moody and cooled off with my grading, but there are plenty of other options and possibilities for this effect, depending on your particular style. I mean, you could use it to warm up and brighten everything except the skin tone. You don't have to use it exactly how I did. Just get creative with it and see how you can use this as a part 
of your own style and your own workflow. All that being said, this was like a pretty simple video, but I hope it gave you some new knowledge, some new ideas to incorporate into your work going forward. If it did, if you enjoyed this, learned something new from it, feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel and following me on Instagram. I post a ton of stuff on Instagram these days, so you don't want to miss out on that at Aiden Robbins. But that's all for this one. Keep creating, and I'll see you in the next one.